The views and opinions expressed on this program do not reflect the company, owners, management, staff, clients, or partners. Tuesday, the 11th day of April 2023, and it's someone's birthday today. We'll get to that, but welcome to Bermuda's Daily Talk Show. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House and Lindos. I'm Jamal Hartman. He's Larry Marshall Jr., and Maya Palacio will be with us in a bit to bring you the latest in her news break brought to you by People's Pharmacy. Brother LMJ, how are you? I'm good. How you been? asking me this abbreviation stuff. I don't know what that's about, but... Yeah, man. Hey, look, man. You know, more than two names, it's, it's getting hard these days. I'm getting on the <laughs> lazy side. I'm getting on the lazy side, you know? But, um, hey, you know, you know what? I realized that the NBA playoffs are starting soon. Um, it's crunch time in the Premier League. Um, cricket season's about to kick off in Bermuda. Yep. Um, <clears throat> what else? I mean, it's it's golf. Golf, golf it's, just happened. Yep. Not. NASCAR season. It, it's yep. just that time of year. Spring just brings out a bunch of sports, track and field. We just had Carista. Mm-hmm. Yep. Carista popping right now. We've got you see Shakari Richardson came back. Yeah, I see she's doing well. So. Look, I think people just want the showdown again. People want the showdown with her and Elaine Thompson and um, Shaw F- 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 Fraser Price. Is it Charlene Fraser Price? Charlene. Charlene. I said Charlene. Charlene. My- SFP. Since you're on SFP. Yeah. SFP. I'm disrespectful this morning. My apologies to all of the Jamaican folks out there. You know, I'm that's my girl. I, I, I'm done for. I actually, I think I follow her on social media somewhere, so I should know better. So forgive me. Um, forgive me for trespassing gang, sir. Um, look, um, greetings, everyone. Thanks for making us part of your daily routine. A good one today as we welcome Larry Shields on from the Center Against Abuse. Um, you know, Larry, you know, you, you, you believe this is something that we need to talk about. You, um, there was an article in the Royal Gazette recently about domestic abuse in Bermuda. We just had a conviction of a yes. man who, um, murdered his, um, girlfriend and so i think this is a topic of importance for our community and my hope is that all of those who are tuned in right now share this link share the conversation um with your friends and family because i think this is probably one of the most timely and important conversations that we need to have in our community um the daily play is a remember when so a bit of hmm history for someone um, <laughs> folks, don't forget to subscribe on our website, follow us on all of our social media channels and stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we, uh, continue our bid and our part to improve our community. Um, good morning to you, TDH. Uh, Tamara's laughing at me. You know what I meant? Shelly Ann. Come on, come on, Shelly Ann. Don't hold it against me. Don't hold it against me, folks. Uh, but we have a question this morning. We asked it on our Instagram, folks. If you ha- don't follow us on Instagram, that's where we ask a majority of the questions that are going to be on the show um, the following day. So if you you know want to get involved, and I know some people don't like to comment publicly. Well, when you respond and p- comment on Instagram, no one can see that it's you. So you can... Um, effectively give your responses on Instagram today prior if we have the question up. But the question, um, basically very short and to the point, is 
what sport deserves more support in Bermuda? And it really comes on the back of kind of what we were discussing yesterday as well, Bermuda's most valuable assets and that amazing story that Maya um, gave yesterday about Carifta, right? Our Carifta athletes. And one of the questions I had is, you know, are we valuing our athletes enough? Are we giving them enough support, the required support to go on? Um, I mentioned Flora Duffy, you know, again, the argument can be made by some that, oh, well, how many people in the world actually compete in triathlons? Fair enough. But from a small island like Bermuda being number one, Jamaica, again, punching above their weight. Growing up, the fastest men in the world, at least in sprint, um, used to be the United States of America and Donovan Bailey from Canada, right? Um, Jamaica, small island, been dominant in male and female um, over the last um, decade or so, right? So gr also growing up in Bermuda, we, we would be honest enough to admit that football and cricket have gotten most of the support um, in Bermuda, both financially and, and public, right? So the question, you know, is just what support deserve, what, what, sorry, what sport deserves more support in Bermuda? Um, I was shocked no one said triathlons, but I guess triathlon fits with track and field, right? Um, so what are your thoughts, folks? What, what sport? And, and, and think of it like this here. Think of sport as a way out. And when I say a way out, not everyone is living in a bad situation. So I don't mean a way out like a way out of a bad situation. What I mean is a way out of your norm into a space that gives you an opportunity to flourish. You have a that, leg up. Yes, a leg up. Like given, uh, you know, let's say you've got this amazing athlete and they want to focus on squash instead of cricket. How do we support that athlete the same way we would support them if they were playing cricket? How do we ensure that they get the opportunities, scouts get to see them play and they can go and maybe go to college if that's the route they want to take, right? Um, we just don't know. Maybe there's professional um, squash where they can get an exempt company to sponsor them where they can do that as a career. I don't know how it works. Question of the morning, what sport deserves more support in Bermuda? What are your thoughts? What are um, your all of them. Mm. Every single sport can make a case for why they deserve more support. More, more, more support. Now, what does more support look like? Do we mean financially? Do we mean uh, people getting behind us and, and, you know, being fans? Do we mean providing resources, which kind of ties back to financially? I think that right now, Bermuda as a whole wants top class results, but we aren't necessarily doing things. We're not providing the right atmosphere for us to flourish. Mm. And what does that mean? So pause, forget about what m more can we do. We're not even doing what control the controllables. We heard, we heard that before, right? We're not even controlling what we can do. We, what we can control now. We are not doing the best with scheduling. We are not doing the best with providing uh, pickup for for athletes afterwards or for things like that. That doesn't cost money, or you know what I mean. That that is something that we could control right now. I don't think mm -hmm. we need more support from that. So I would like to see that going forward along with more support and of course support really it comes down to dollars and cents and how it's allocated properly i think we, we really have to look at that well um, you know i i set it up and i i could tell you that you can tell he and i were, were friends beyond the camera but i set it up like that because i didn't define what support was so larry kind yeah. of broke it like you know it, it's you know at the end of the day Let's not be fools. Support comes down to what did you just say? Comes down to dollars. Dollars and cents. Yeah. Dollars and cents. So that's the overall question we're asking. We're not just talking about support going and waving flags and stuff like that. At the end of the day, what sport deserves more financial backing? But again, we're leaving it up to you to decide. But what sport do you believe deserves more support in Bermuda? And 
I'll, I'll go through some of the Instagram um, replies. Larry, while, while I do that, do you um, pull them up? You want to go through some of the comments we have up here? Okay, yeah, we have, sorry, Shundi Shields. It all depends on the sport and who the participants as football and cricket in, B in Bermuda doesn't get similar financial support as rugby. Mm -hmm. uh, some may argue different, but I take your point. Mm -hmm. Sam place, track and field. Definitely a leg up towards scholarships overseas so students can get their education and work on their talent or craft at the same time. Mm -hmm. Swimming and soccer, too. Uh, good point. Remember, track um, scholarships mm -hmm. are reducing. The academic way is the best way for scholarships nowadays. Yeah. And from Karen Simmons, track and field and racket sports, tennis, squash, badminton, lacrosse. Yes, I, I all agree. Again, I think every sport can make a strong case for it. But that, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Every lacrosse in Bermuda? Karen, do we do lacrosse in Bermuda? It's I'm pretty so sure rare. we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's rare. rare. Oh, okay. But I'm That's... sure we do. All right. So here's there's 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 responses are similar to what we got on Instagram. So Instagram first response was track and field. Simple, just track and field. Um, another response. This was interesting. Women's girls cricket. Hmm. Women's girls cricket. Another one. If I had to pick one, track and field. The person said all, like you. But if I had to mm -hmm. pick one, track and field. Another person said, track and field, swimming, tennis. No. There are people who are saying, with all this ocean, why don't we put more money into swimming? Well, one of the reasons, folks, is swimmers don't train in the ocean. <laughs> they train in pools. Uh, I actually used to think like that until someone explained my ignorance. They're like, Jamel, swimmers don't train in the ocean. And it really made me catch myself. Like, just because we have, you know, rocks or cliffs that people can jump and dive off of, divers are not training there. They're training in pools, which is why facilities are so crucial to certain sports. Um, so that's interesting. Motocross racing. Someone said motocross racing. Um, another person said track and field and or racket sports. So racket sports could be tennis. It could be squash, right? Um, racquetball. Um, another per Here you go, Maya. Someone said women's field hockey. Not field hockey, women's field hockey. Another person said sailing, squash, and rugby. Well, sailing, which we know has been a big thing in the news, especially since 2017. Another person said motorsports. Another said football. And then someone said free diving, free diving. So those are some of the responses that we've received so far. Um, you know, what? any thoughts on those ones there? Um, again, I agree with every single person's one. We need to invest more. I think looking at it from a macro level, we have to find a way, and when I mean me, the people, which who works on our behalf, the government mm -hmm. has to find a way to invest in these sports. Now, mm -hmm. I really think that they have to find a way to form corporate partnerships because let's keep it real, the, the reinsurance capital of the world is Bermuda and there's resources that, we, you know, I think it has to be a partnership with them. The mm -hmm. other thing is, is to get the results when these investments will take time mm. just like any other business what the first few years of business you're not going to make a profit or you're not going to do this you want to see returns on these sports investments in 10 15 sometimes 20 years you'll mm. reap the benefits but the community will do better i think sometimes we want this we we just gave ten thousand dollars to the carifta athletes and we want to see 60 medals that's not how it works Mm. You want to, you have to be, have a continuous, uh, ruling investment and building infrastructure, getting better coaching, better minds, and mm. then eventually we should see better results. But I think we want that immediate thing, and then we want to compare ourselves to to jurisdictions that one do get it right, and two invest better than us. Mm. I I like what you just said. Compare ourselves to jurisdictions that got it right because after jamaica made it to the world cup 
in 98, I think it was, what yeah. did Bermuda do? Oh, well, let's see what they did. Trinidad next, same thing. Jamaica yeah. with the track athletes. Folks, it didn't happen for Jamaica overnight. It didn't happen for Trinidad overnight. And I think we're, we're looking for these quick fixes and, and it's just not going to happen. Um, I know that in a Bermuda sense, we keep talking about the amount of professional players we have in football now, right? Mostly at the lower league levels, if we're honest. Well, these countries like Jamaica, Trinidad, they've had these players doing this for years. Yeah. Years. So we're, we're getting into that space. It's not to discredit um, you know, those who are making progress. It's just really managing expectations and being realistic uh, about where we are. Now, if we want to take those next steps, then we have to honestly support. The, yeah. it, 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 it takes, at the end, it, folks, it does take money. Yeah. And, you know, we may be at one standard and we're looking to get to a higher standard, but right now, maybe we have to creep before we get. And I think we don't see it. We just say, hey, well, we should be running like Jamaica. Okay, well, Jamaica's infrastructure for track and field has been defined since forever. And yes, I know we used to compete with them in the 1970s, but things have evolved. They have evolved. We haven't evolved. Mm -hmm. We have certified track and field coaches within these schools. Yeah, Our schools have gym teachers that aren't certified, most of them, that do it. Now you can say, oh, well, they need to get certified. They can get certified in every single sport. It's just not possible. So until we look to do things different, provide the resources, actually have coaches for specific sports in the schools, especially when we get to a middle school or high school level, things will remain the same. We have people that are introducing sports, and that's their job. I'm not asking for them to become experts and stuff. But well, let's get the experts to these kids at a younger age, and then we can go. You, you make valid points, um, and, and something that I want to emphasize, and I hope people pick up on. The gym teacher is not a coach at every sport. And that is the expert. I've heard parents, these gym teachers ain't doing it. It's different. They have to do grades. They have to do general wellness. So they, they can't just focus on the athletes. They have to focus on non-athletes and working yeah. them to be physically active. active. Yeah. It's called physical education. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, so, I always thought that how we had a Canadian gym teacher when I was in primary school and um, well, how much he really knew about cricket. And I was a cricket fanatic back then. But I, and, and it's not, I'm not d disparaging him at all. It's just always one, because it's not a major sport in Canada, right? Um, yeah. I believe he was Canadian, by the way. I believe he was. Um, you know, I mean, I, I probably trust him more in hockey. Um, the ice kind rather than cricket. Uh, yeah, and if we, we needed an ice hockey team, he would be that expert, if he knew about it, that we can bring in and they learn from. So, you know, it, it, it frustrates me because I think we get it wrong at so many of the foundational levels mm -hmm. and we're always trying to fix it and pick it up. Yeah. Um, we don't even do strength and conditioning at the right age and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. we yeah. have to just, Put the resources in to get it, get it right. Folks, what are your thoughts? What sports deserve more support in Bermuda? Uh, we've had some fascinating responses. Free diving, which I found interesting. Um, that's something, because to me, free diving is not just physical, but um, it, it's environmental, right? It, it, it's, it's, it's something um, it, more to it than just um, the, the sport itself. Um, I don't understand it totally, but... Um, it, it seems like it's more to it just than the physical. Um, so what are your thoughts, audience? Is there a sport that comes to mind? I mean, motorsports. I've heard people mention motorsports. Now, while motorsports may not have scholarship opportunities, with the right support, they can definitely um, go places with it, right? They can, uh, you know, again, financial backing. They can probably make it overseas to compete. Yeah, I agree. And, and it's, it's the same thing with so many other volleyball, um, like so many things that we don't necessarily see. A lot of the Olympic sports, weightlifting, you know, these are different things. Golf, nobody, it, it's so many things that we can make a case and argue from. But if we continue to approach it from an amateur standpoint, mm -hmm. it will not get better. Yeah, I, I find it interesting also, um, no one said netball. No one said softball. 
And the reason they come to mind for me is those were the sports my mom played. So those were sports growing up that women dominated in Bermuda, but no one has said netball and softball um, that they deserve more support in Bermuda. You know what I found interesting about softball is they don't have a fast pitch softball league. So how can we have not anymore? So how can we get scholarships if we don't even have a fast pitch we only softball have, league? Honestly, really? We only have slow pitch. When my mother played, they had fast pitch and slow pitch. Interesting. You get what I'm saying? So I I'm I, I get why no one's saying softball because how are we going to send footage out to a coach? Mm. With soft, you know what I mean? You, you have to learn. Um, we have to bring back fast pitch. Let's go to the comments. I see you got one. Uh, very interesting. I agree. Um, sorry, this is what, not the one I was looking for. Sorry. Um, Bermuda government is broke. Therefore, partnering with IB sector to provide financial support is to improve the quality of local sports is a wise move. I would agree, but I also say we need to be on our government to provide the right legislation for these athletes. Here, here's the thing with the private sector, um, and I'm all for it. I, I Again, I don't think that government, um, they, they don't have the money to sustain um, the financial support. I believe the, final, financial, the, the um, private sector should be back in um, our sports organizations and groups. Now, people have said for years that the reason the government has to give so much to football and cricket is because the fi- private sector supports maybe sailing and, and you know other sports, right? And I always said, you know, reputation-wise, then, well, what, let's clean up our reputation. Let's, let's clean these sports up. Let's change things. Um, sometimes cleaning it up means, you know what? I've been ahead of the top of this organization for years. Maybe it's time for someone else to take it in a new direction. People don't want to let go of position. I don't know. <laughs> what I will say is, you know, it, it just goes back to black media, right? Um, people with money support what they feel like it. These, these, these sports can probably benefit them as well, but they choose not to pay attention to them because it's not in their interest. So I... I, I think the private sector, there's an issue there that an elephant in the room that we've failed to address. Yeah. And uh, I'm very interested in having more in-depth conversations about that. All right, let's go to these final comments before we bring Maya in. Michelle White says, I would, uh, I would say water sports such as rowing in general to take advantage of our ocean and accessible to all. Uh, there's, uh, there should also be development programs for each sport. Um, Sean DeShield says, Larry is spot on regarding providing the sport and fundamentals and expertise at an early age, as this is where it all begins. Um, Renee Simmons says, basketball, there was a league here. I believe it still yep. is. It still is, yeah. Nicole Walker says, boxing, yeah. N- n- not another one I was interested in, the one said boxing. Um, and then um, Sean DeShield says, bowling is another great sport that deserves financial support. Keep the answers coming, folks. This has been awesome. Yeah. To paint us I says, think you need to you need to bring what your goal is and why be, uh, the why behind the, that goal. For instance, if the goal is to develop Olympians, then money should go towards that. But why is that goal interesting? And yes, the why is very important. Um, my, it's itching to get in on this tomorrow. My end before we get in trouble, folks. It's, it's time yeah. for the news break. Um, you know what? Maya wasn't supposed to be here today, but she's here. She's a warrior. She's a soldier. Folks, many of you wouldn't have showed up if you were Maya. You will find out why after this. Good morning, good morning. Well, I'm getting me a shirt made that says good morning, good morning. I'm, I'm going to do that. That's, no, that's your, that's your tagline. That, that's, that's Maya. Well, Greetings. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good this morning. Went to the gym, had my smoothie, feeling good. Why are you shutting off? Like, I mean, I it was raining. I couldn't go outside the garage. Be, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm glad. Sounds like a you problem, but you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. But... My smoothie too, my. Wow, wow. They drop it in the end. My... Yeah, like my teachers. <laughs> wow. Giving, giving him credit, although you know he, you said he did something to you. You know, made you run too much or whatever. But um. <laughs> Maya, talk to me. You love sports. You like you love love sports. Yes, I do. I, I very much so love sports. Please give share, share, share what's popping in this conversation. 
I love all the talk that's happening and I love that people are like really thinking about like their sport or maybe even someone else that they know, like understanding what people have gone through, all the stories that they've told them. I can definitely say I've spoken to a lot of athletes. So it's just, I know one thing that comes to mind from a conversation I had before was just like even having, not just having the backing, but the understanding of like maybe even health insurance in some things, in some cases, because like when these that go away, even when they're in university and school and things like that, they get injuries, things happen. So it'd be nice to have that extra added support and that comfort knowing that if something does happen, they're protected or they're helped. Um, so that's a big one I know that like people think about a lot because like it's, it's scary thinking that like, one injury could really take you out. So it's good to have that back. You see, at least you know that you're covered mm-hmm. and you know that you'll be okay. Yeah. I, th- I thank you for saying that because we, we had a, not an argument, but a conversation in one of my chat groups want to say or sometime last year it was about the Bermuda national team and just local football and people saying you know no of course guys are not going to train and give the all in amateur football they, they don't have insurance to cover that some of these guys don't even have you know full-time jobs that, that you know they're contractors or they're self-employed and we don't think about stuff like that um the, sure. the college aspect right you know there's there's the chance that injury changes everything for your whole trajectory so i think it's very important in terms of how we support now what i thought larry was going to bring up which now maya's triggered my mind is i don't know how it works so forgive me folks maybe larry could shed more light or you maya but it's i don't know what it stands for nil where players and athletes in in college in the u.s can now be paid right so now there's another opportunity beyond scholarships for if you get a scholarship to a school, you can also get financial backing from a company per se, right? Um, what's yeah. his name? Um, LeBron James sons in, in the millions, I think. No, like he's yeah. yeah. Uh, but he, I think that's another opportunity. Yeah, the female basketball player Reese. I want to say her name is. Mm, she, she has a very good new deal also. Um, but you know, I think you have to be at the top end of it. So nobody's going to invest in someone who is coming. 140th, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Um, so you have to be at the top end of it. But I think with this, like, to Maya's point earlier about, you know, insurance and peace, those are the types of new initiatives that I would like to see our government mm-hmm. taking place. Mm-hmm. Posing in pictures and stuff like that, that's not going to help us. Can you get in the room and get these insurance execs together to kind of say, hey, we will insure the national team for the next five years. Like, I'm, that's the type of things that we need, not meaningless things. You guys are actually getting me a little bit hyped right now on my chest. I'm like, oh, this is the type yeah. of stuff that we need. And because <laughs> like you, I know that there have been national players that are working in those spaces now, and they know what it takes, and they know how hard it can be, even if you went to, away to school on a scholarship for it, and now you're in this position. Think about what you had to go through. Like, I remember in my first year, I actually tore my ACL um, playing Phil Aki for Dalhousie, and... I thought it was over. Life was over. Like I thought my sport career was over and it cost like a thousand dollars to get me to on an ambulance to the hospital that was like two minutes away. And my mom and I had to cover it. It was, it was a mess. It was hard. And so it was just like, it's a lot. Such being an international student out there in different spaces, you don't get the same coverage as, you know, others do out there. So it's things like that. we got to look into to help our athletes when they're out there. I know we're having a serious moment, but I don't have a poker face, but you're expecting a government that, re- look, they take pictures, they travel on trips they shouldn't be on. Look, between the air miles and, you know, you're talking about it should be about the, it's not about athletes, it's not about Bermuda, it's about being reelected. They care about the picture book that they're getting released once the premiership's up. This is, again, whatever's going to get them elected, that's what they care about. So I'm, I'm just, I mean, in all honesty, I know we've got a good mind, I'm sorry. I just, I, it's going to take more than these guys, these people. My last point, but that is where accountability comes in. If I am a sports person and I'm, that's what I'm really into and I'm, it's my passion, I need to come to my government and say, I need these things to happen. It's all about accountability. Mm-hmm. Our elective figures, we want legislation. We want legislation that will assist the people going forward mm-hmm. yeah. and maybe even all the sports presidents coming together from each club and just figuring out what they need the most and bringing that to government too like don't always leave it on government like we learned yeah. before from other stories. yeah yeah, yeah. suggestions 
All right, yep. let me let me hop into the news break, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> this is the Daily Hour News Break brought to you by People's Pharmacy. And starting out, um, we have a report coming from the police. That around 4.20 p.m. on Friday, April 8th, police received a report that a black bag containing several brown brick-shaped packages wrapped in tape had been spotted in the water near Heritage Wharf, Royal Naval Navy Dockyard Sands. Officers entered the water and recovered the bag containing the items and believed it to be controlled drugs. The bag and its contents have been since secured and will be submitted to the government for analysis. Uh, Acting Detective Chief Inspector Dorica Burns expressed her gratitude to the members of the public who contacted the police to report the discovery. She says the decision by these individuals to inform police of the situation no doubt prevented a significant quantity of what appears to be illegal narcotics from reaching the streets and possessing a threat to the safety or the well-being of the community. Given the attendant problems created by and associated with the illegal drugs trade on the island, they are to be con. Um, commended the people who actually reported it to the police. You know what? Someone at my job in, here in Florida asked me just last week, they said, how do people get drugs and guns into Bermuda? And I'm like, probably a cruise ship and they just throw it overboard and someone picks it up. I honestly, I think I've heard that somewhere, but I'm like, maybe somebody on a jet ski picks it up. But anyway, luckily the police were able to pick this up and um, intercept it. Yeah. And I know I mentioned yesterday over the news that there hadn't been an update yet, but here we are with an update over the statistics from the traffic violations that happened over the Easter holiday by the Bermuda Police Service. So you're looking at what has come from the 5 p.m. on Thursday on the 6th of April until 5 a.m. Monday, the 10th of April. Yesterday, there were 23 people arrested, consisting of 11 for outstanding warrants, eight on suspicion of impaired driving, one for intruding on a privacy of a female, one for willful damage, one for being drunk and incapable, and one for breach of peace. Additionally, there were 31 stops and searches conducted and 72 traffic tickets issued. Man, I just don't want to be one of those people, man. And, and to do that, you just got to be responsible. Mm-hmm. And even closing out with more of it, um, what happened as well uh, with the sobriety road checkpoints, uh, people were definitely arrested for it, taken over by the police six side taken over by the police there were 2620 motorist engagements over the weekend an engagement is where a motorist is stopped and a sobriety assessment is conducted 12 motorists were tested on a roadside sobriety testing device eight failed this test and were arrested on suspicion of impaired driving all were taken to the hamilton police station and conducted official analyzers six refused to take the test one failed and one passed as a result the person who passed did get to leave without any charges. The others will be going to magistrate court soon. And in addition, during the roadside sobriety test, which you see right here on the screen, um, exercises, six people were arrested for outstanding court warrants and 46 moving violation tickets were issued for the following offenses. As you can see up on the screen, the highest offense was unlicensed vehicle at 13. The second was tint on the windows at 12. And the third highest was no insurance. What? What is a youth license offense? I, I did put some thought into that. I believe that a youth license offense because there are still violations. You can't tow anyone if you're not 18 years no. and over, and you also can't be out on the roads, I believe, after 1 a.m., something like that for, for youth. So that may have been the violations there. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I'm not surprised about the unlicensed and uninsured. I think that number is going to continue to stay high because – my money is tight. That's people's just not going to relicense their car and bike, but they're going to use it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's true. Trying to close up the news as fast as I can here so we get to our important conversation. But a reminder from the Monetary Authority, the Bermuda Monetary Authority is advising all Bermuda residents that the use of horizontal cash will be retired and will no longer have value as a legal tender after the 31st of December. Now, I know that might seem far away, but the days come quick, so make sure you are retiring all those monies. We urge you, they say, to check and see if you have any horizontal cash that needs to be disposed or exchanged of by the deadline. So there it is there. Make sure you, um, you give it to your banks as well. Oh, I'm about to check my pockets. I'm dead, yeah, Let me sir. check it for you. I, I can I check have, it for you. I might have Bermuda money that I haven't, you know, been using because I'm not in Bermuda all the time. But anyway, all right, sorry. Thank you, Maya, for that. No problem. Trying to close up the news with some upcoming things that are happening. The Barclay Institute will have a showcase of the greatest showmen on Saturday, April the 15th, 6.30 at the Barclay Institute. 
So if you haven't heard about The Greatest Showman, it is a musical. So I'm going to be quite impressed to see how well the students do in this because some of the notes on those songs are quite high. But yes, yeah, the Buffy Institute Drama Department is putting on The Greatest Showman. All righty. How's the weather looking? The weather for today is looking like early clouds and showers giving way to a brighter day, hopefully. And we have a high of 67 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. There's it here. Brett, what you got? Today is World Parkinson's Day. Uh, just another day to bring awareness to this disease and try and just bring more awareness to it. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, well, it's also, as you can see from the audience, it's uh, happy birthday, Maya, from Karen Simmons and Jackie Eve and Tamara saying happy birthday, beautiful, keep shining. Kenton Trot, happy birthday, Maya. Well, when I'm going I will sing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's okay. Oh, good. No, you don't want this song? Come on, Mike. I mean, I didn't give you a joke today, but you know Thank what? Heavens, that was my gift right there. Wow. wow. <laughs> okay. I guess we could take back the gift this weekend. Well, we have a little something from us. So let, let you know, folks, we're going to share a little video that um, all of us from TDH um, sharing our love for Maya. Happy birthday, Maya, my Aries sister. Just wanted to take a minute to wish you many more blessings and many more laps around the sun. It is a joy to watch you grow. Looking at where you started on the show and where you are today, the time and effort that you put into every story is so commendable. You deserve nothing but the best for your birthday. I hope you have fun. And the next time I see you, champagne is on me. Hey, Maya. Just wanted to wish you a very happy birthday. I uh, hope you have a great one. You're one of Bermuda's rising talents as uh, in the journalist space. A very valued member of the team, and it's always a pleasure working with you. Happy, happy birthday, Maya. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Keep being the talented, industrious, fabulous woman that you are. I am so proud of you. You are such an inspiration. And I know that bigger and better things are in store for you, so just keep shining. Much love, love and life. Oh, and I can't wait to finally meet you. Hi, Maya. Happy birthday. Wish you nothing but the best. Continue to do what you do. I admire you very much for the way how you handle yourself and the message that you got out to the Bermuda people. Enjoy your day. Hi, Maya. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Maya. May you have continued blessings and enjoy what the new year has to offer. Happy New Year, Maya. It's really a pleasure to do this show with you, The Daily Hour. Um, seeing you grow in this space has been awesome. The dedication and commitment to your craft is second to none. Um, honestly, wishing you the healthiest, happiest, and most prosperous year yet. And um, let's go kick it at the Katy Perry concert this weekend. Uh, that was sweet. Maya, Mason was making so much noise when I was trying to do that. <laughs> I was like, look at Marshall's face only up close to the screen. Like that. In the background, I'm like the music will cover that. But um yeah, we're going Katy Perry said day, folks. Um I'm I'm probably gonna be sitting here and tomorrow be jumping up and down. So um that, that's our gift to you, Maya, um to go she are you one of those like really crazy people singing and going crazy in the Probably. Yes. <laughs> oh. Mosh pits and all that. I'll no. do mosh pit. Don't. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. No pushing. I, I, I don't. I, so I'll be that guy sitting there and just, you know, on my phone wondering what the hell did I get myself into. But Maya, honestly, happy birthday to you. Um, make it a great, awesome day. As you can see, the audience showing you love, folks. If you see me, Maya out there today, show us some love. No touching. No touching. No touching. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, honestly, it's a pleasure doing this with you. And I know women are not like they used to be, right? When I was growing up, two things you couldn't do. Ask a woman her age, her weight. You still don't ask her weight. But age-wise, women seem to be so proud of how they're growing in age. And you've never been shy about sharing your age. You know, I'm 26 now. So I'm 26. Okay. I just I 26, 26. 26. Yeah. So 26 years old. And someone said to me yesterday about you, Mike. They said, so young but such a mature spirit. Like you, you, you have possessed this, this older spirit, right? And I was like, 
Yeah, she definitely does. She she that de- and I I'm not calling you old, but I think it's what helps you in this space you're in. It, it's what it's you know that self determination that you have. So keep doing what you do, my sister. Um, you'll be celebrating while we're out in Las Vegas, trying to become better at what we do at the broadcasting conference. See you soon, my. Have a great day. You guys soon. Have an awesome conversation, guys. I'm excited for this one. Thank you so much. Folks, we're going to have an extended conversation with Mr. Reese Shields. I hope she doesn't have anywhere to go because this is an important conversation. We don't want to run out of time. We have a lot mm-hmm. to discuss. Um, so please share this uh, conversation on your social media, in your WhatsApp groups. Again, as we said, we just had a very huge case where a man was sentenced to a very long time in prison um, for a case where he murdered his girlfriend in Bermuda. Um that man actually had a history of abuse, um, as it was stated in the Royal Gazette. So for me, these conversations are extremely important. Um, so stick with us. We'll be back after this break. Welcome to Shields from the Center Against Abuse on to the show. Let's face it. Life can be a little <laughs> wild, but shopping doesn't have to be. I choose people's so that whether it's a prescription that needs to be filled, a toy for my little terror, or a gift for a new addition to the family, um, we'll see about that. Everything's available in one convenient location. Some call it Peoples. I call it my one-stop shop in the city. Peoples, we're here for you. Welcome to the new bulk store, Lindo's Next Level. Wake up in the morning with enough coffee to keep you running throughout the entire day. Your pet at home deserves the best. Stock up on dog food to keep your puppy happy. Need a quick, tasty lunch at home? Your chicken nuggets will be jumping right out of the freezer. What's a movie night without popcorn? You can never have too much. Lindo's Next Level. Why go anyplace else? Mom celebrating her 70th birthday next month. Have you noticed her age is catching up with her? Yeah. Plus, she's having a hard time getting up and around like she's used to. I would sure hate to see her fall. At Medical House Limited, we can help make life situations easier. We have electric beds, motorized scooters, bath stools, walkers, you name it. Mom's been real good to us. We'll get her birthday and Christmas gifts from Medical House. Medical House has relocated next to the Dandy Town Field. Number 6, Bakery Lane, Pembroke. Telephone, 292-3622. Everybody, welcome back to The Big Show. Larry Marshall Jr. I'm Jamel Hartman. It's The Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. Folks, don't forget to subscribe on our website. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Without further ado, let's give a warm TDH welcome to our guest for the day. We've got Laurie Shield from the Center Against Abuse. They, they, they seem to love you out here. They seem to love you. How are you? Doing crazy. Got to calm them down sometimes. Long, long time no see. Yes, long time no see. Happy birthday, Maya. Yes, yes. She's yeah, I, you and let me just say, I didn't realize she was that age. I've had the pleasure of meeting her a couple of years ago. We did an interview and I had her 10 years older and not based on how she looked, just based on her maturity alone. No, indeed. And, yeah. and honestly, I, I, I don't think anyone says that to offend her. It's really just the way she pre- she presents herself. Seriously. It really has helped her with her growth. And um, I think she's a model model citizen for many. So, um, Maya, I'm telling you, you appreciate it. People recognize it. Keep pushing, keep going. And I guarantee when we leave Vegas, just coming out like Katie Couric and them, she's going to be on top of her game even more. <laughs> There you go. There you but, go. Opportunities. Um, yeah, indeed. Absolutely. But thank you so much for doing this. Um, as I stated, it's been too long um, since we've last had you on. Um, but for those who may not know, just tell us a bit about your background and your role within the Center Against Abuse. Sure. So my background is actually in HR. I did not intend to be at the Center Against Abuse. I loved HR and had been in that role for close to 10 years. And the opportunity presented itself at the Center Against Abuse for interim executive director. I had been on the board there for a year. And at that point in time, I was 
um, being made redundant at a job and said, yeah, I'll do this role for a year. Well, here we are 15 years later and um, I'm the full-time executive director and have been doing this role. And it was something that when I thought about it actually came naturally for me because um, domestic abuse is a topic that I've known of when I think about it almost all my life. Um, not directly, but indirectly. From being a child, my grandmother talked to us about her experiences in an abusive situation as a child victim of domestic abuse, where her father was extremely verbally, emotionally, and physically abusive to her mother and her and her siblings. And so her way of combating this was to talk to her children and her grandchildren about what she had experienced and her hopes and her dreams for her family, what she had done to ensure that um, her family didn't end up in that situation. Now, she couldn't stop everything, but she did her best to let all of us know what not to do, you know, and it was up to us to actually go ahead and and follow her lead. Um, but yeah, domestic abuse didn't just start yesterday. And while the Center Against Abuse has been around since 1979, domestic abuse has been around for, you know, centuries before that, unfortunately. And here we are today still trying to combat this crime. Um, well, what, what, just explain, because uh, we hear about abuse, we hear about domestic abuse. What are the various forms of abuse and domestic abuse um, that you deal with? Sure. So you can have, when we think of domestic abuse, initially we think of physical, someone who's hitting you, someone who... Um, isn't nice to you, you know? So we think of, it also comes in an emotional form, um, financial form as well, verbal, someone who's just consistently being nasty to you, um, sexual form, enforcing um, or making you perform sexual acts or watching pornography that you don't wanna do. Um, religious even, can people can use religion as a form of abuse, um, actually, people actually tend to stay in abusive relationships longer when they there's a religious component attached to it. Because if I'm a Christian or if I'm following the Quran and or any type of religion, more than likely it has some sort of component that speaks about marriage and um, how a wife should be treated and or how a wife should be treating her husband. And so in the Bible, um, it speaks of um, Eve coming after Adam and Eve being made a helpmate to Adam. And some people take that out of context and utilize that to maintain that power and control of another. And then here recently, we have the technological um, facilitated abuse, whereby I can either use technology to abuse you, wherein I will speak about you on technology, say bad things about you. I may even dispense pictures that mm -hmm. um, you don't want to dispense, or I can threaten to do those things to maintain that power and control over you. So abuse is not just about showing up black and blue. It's showing up with a whole lot of other things on your head. Mm -hmm. Real so, quick, I just want to um, follow up. You, you mentioned financial. What, what does that look like? So financial abuse has a number of faces. So I can be in control as the abuser of everything. I can be in control of all the finances. And when it comes to financial abuse, I actually now control everything about you. I decide when you eat, because I give you finances for your food. I decide when you drive the car. I decide when you catch the bus. I decide um, actually when you go to the hospital and even if you get medicine, even you get attention for medical needs if I've been physically abusive to you. Financial control can mean I'm not going to work. And um, I've decided that I'm going to use up all the money. Financial control can also mean I'm going to try to make you lose your job um, because 
I'm going to let you know that I have the power. So those are some of the faces of financial control and and helping you lose your job or, or showing that I can lose your job. I might call about you to your boss and talk to your boss about you or those on your job. I can create lies and say that, oh, you shared with me con confidential information about um, clients on your job. It can also look like um, the abuser may take you regularly to work and now they decide at the last minute, I'm not going to take you to work. So you need to catch the bus or get to work the best way you can. So now you're showing up to work late. Um, and so those patterns of behaviors are some of the things that you will see with uh, financial abuse. All right, folks, if you have any right. questions or comments, please, um, you can put them in there and we'll try to get through as many as possible. Yeah, I appreciate your synopsis of the different types of abuses because, as you said, it it's not just showing up black and blue. So I really appreciate that. Um, but moving on, what are some of what are some initiatives your organization does to prevent abusive situations? So, Center Against Abuse, we provide part of our arm is actually community awareness, and that's our preventative arm. Everything else we do is pretty much reactionary to our clients that come in the door. But with our preventative and awareness, what we do is we go into schools, we go into churches, we do lunch and learns with businesses. Um, we also host our own workshops. We just had one April the 1st our advocacy awareness workshop where we teach people to understand um, what abuse looks like and how we can help someone that's in that situation. Because a lot of times when someone has that conversation with you to say, well, you know, um, I'm in an abusive situation um, and they start sharing their story, what we tend to do is like, oh, well, that person doesn't seem like they are that way. Or we'll say, well, if I was in that situation, this is what I would do. I would blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Um, but, you know, when you're in an abusive situation, you're dealing with love. You're dealing with emotions. Um, and speaking specifically to intimate partner abuse, um, because there are other forms of domestic abuse. It can be between siblings, parents, and things like that. But Center Against Abuse deals specifically with inter inter intimate partner abuse. And you're dealing with love, and love creates a chemical reaction in you um, where you tend to forgive more easily that person. Um, you tend to forget things that they've done. And we look for the good. We look for the person that we once met that from the beginning, that person that showed up and swept you off your feet in the first place. And, um, and so there are a lot of moving um, balls, I would say, when it comes to domestic abuse, where that person just can't leave because I showed up black and blue, or because this person is cheating on me consistently, um, or has been lying to me left, right, and center, um, could be gaslighting me, all of those things, because I can't leave because guess what? I'm financially tied to this person. Um, or I love this person. Or if I leave, guess what? My chances on risk of harm will increase because that is the norm for individuals in physically abusive situation where that abuser needs to maintain that power and control. So yeah, they may show back up and be sweet and be that person that you want them to be. But once they've got you back in their clutches, watch out because they're going to turn up the abuse to let you know you can't leave me because I control you. They may start strangula strangulating you, um, which is another form of abuse, um, wherein they determine, I decide if you live or you die. Oh, yeah. So what is the most prevalent type of abuse that takes place in Bermuda and what's being done to address it? So um, emotional abuse is one of the most prevalent abuses that happen in Bermuda. Um, and as I said, stated before, what we're doing is we are doing some advocacy training on that. And if you're interested in learning more about this, you can certainly contact us on our through our social media pages, Instagram and Facebook. You can send us an email at info at centeragainstabuse.bm and just put your name on our wait list and I will inform you of any trainings that you that we will be having that you can be a part of. Um, and so what we're doing 
right now we do have a campaign out that will be starting and you will see some ads um, in regards to verbal abuse and emotional abuse because these are some abuses that happen often and people just think that this is normal. Um, but when you're in a situation where you are too scared to voice your opinion to your partner because of the response your partner will give you, that's when you know that you're in an abusive situation, when you don't feel free to be who you are, to speak your mind, to, to have that opinion because you're fearful that is when you know that that is in an abusive relationship you're in. And then there are so many people that are in that abusive relationship. And unfortunately, it doesn't just stop when you leave that person. Because remember, that person is trying to maintain that power and control over you. And so they will now use the courts to abuse you. They will use um, whether it's the divorce process, keeping you in the courts, whether it's um, child support, either taking you to court constantly about, about the child support or not giving you child support at all, showing up at your home uninvited at all hours, um, even stalking you. So those are some of the things that continue to happen even when the person has left the abusive um, relationship. But it is up to us as a community um, to hold abusers accountable, you know, to stand up for victims. Too long we've created a society where we victimize the victims. And so we have to ensure that what we do as friends, as family, as co-workers, as um, teammates is that when we see abuse happening that we stop it when we see systems that have been put in place that actually re-victimize the victim then we have to bring that to people's attention and stop it um, one of the things that we had lobbied for was that in bermuda when it came to immigration immigration said um if you're a spouse of a bermudian then you have to stay in the home. If you are not living in the home, then we will remove your work permit from you. We will remove your spousal ladder from you. This was keeping um, non-Bermudians in abusive situations oh, because yeah. now I am tied to this person because if I leave the home for my safety, I now lose my job. Yeah automatically yeah. because this is an immigration policy and so we had to have that, that yeah. conversation with immigration to say you know and you put this in place you were not considering individuals who were in abusive relationships and this is okay. actually keeping victims in abusive situations and when they leave you re-victimize them by removing their spousal ladder wow okay very interesting and um, so they no longer do that yeah that's good great change right. Um, if someone's in an abusive situation, what steps should they take to deal with it? So one of the steps that they should deal with to, to, to um, do is contact Center Against Abuse. Let us help you get out safely. Um, we can work with you to get a protection order if need be. We can even talk with you about counseling because a lot of times people don't realize the trauma that that abuse has had on it. And sometimes it, it can be triggering, whether it's a scent, a smell, somebody said something, or even a particular place that you may cross and you realize, oh, an incident happened there. Uh, here I go again. And so we want you to be your best. We want you to recognize that um, you are better than the abuse that you may have endured these past years or even few months. Um, and how that plays a part in your psyche and who you are and we work really hard with you to get you to the space where you know who you are and you're a better person. You're in a safe space. You have hope again. And you know that you can not just end this for yourself, but end this for, for your family as well. Indeed. We've got some questions from the audience, folks. If you have any questions or comments, please send them through. We'll do our best to get through as many as possible. Um, Media Maya, she's asking, how do you get people to recognize that they are abusers? You, sh you talk to them about what you've seen, what you've heard. And, you know, most abusers know they are abusers because most abusers do it behind closed doors. They wouldn't mm -hmm. do this in front of family, friends, or co-workers. Um, 
most abusers do these things behind closed doors and they're only doing it to that individual, that specific person, that target. You don't see those behaviors being displayed upon other people. And that's how we differentiate someone who's abusive and someone who actually is just angry. Angry people, they're going to be angry with everyone, but an abuser will just have that specific person that they will speak to like that. And so what we can do, especially if we're a friend or a family member and we see or we hear about it, is that we need to call that person out on it. Like, what, like, what are you doing? Mm hmm you know, show up as as man in particular, show up when you hear your neighbor knock on the door, ring that doorbell just to stop it. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's important for man to show up in those spaces, whether it's the man that's abusing or the female that's abusing. It is important for men in particular to show up, to speak up and to have those conversations. A lot of times, ma'am, we don't have those conversations. Yeah. You know, Nicole, each other. So um, today was the last time Chevelle Dylan Burgess was seen in 2020. Do you think enough is being done to protect those in abusive relationships? How can we as family and friends assist? Wow, that's that's a big question because when it comes to abuse, it's actually up to the victim to speak up. It's actually up to the friends and family that know about it to speak up and encourage the victim to say something because no one can do anything until that victim actually speaks up. Um, and when I say no one, I mean police courts cannot do anything. We can't go into the courts on behalf of a victim and say, oh, I know that this has happened, ABC. I need the police to do this, that, and the other. You can call the police and say, this is happening to a next door neighbor, or this is happening to a person. You need to come now. Um, someone has showed up to the job, you need to come now, those types of things. But it is actually up to the victim to press charges, to prosecute. And so we as a community need to support victims. And when they do that, um, one of the things that we've worked really hard based on um, information that we've heard back from our clients is that we've worked really hard with um, the Royal Gazette and other news agencies to um, stop placing victims' names in the paper because that kind of re-victimizes them again when they see all their business out there. It takes a lot for a person to go forward because they know that they're opening up their whole life story to the whole community. And so um, we are just asking the community to support those people. Um, let's let's stop gossiping about people and let's start supporting them because a lot of times if I know that you're in an abusive situation, it now becomes gossip for the community. Let's stop yeah. all that. Let's let's start working with the person to support them, to best help them and keep them safe. Mm -hmm. This this is a very good question. Rosalind Famous, she's asking, are there any programs to encourage men to speak up about being abused by women? Yeah, uh, men who are abused by women are some of the hardest um, victims to come across that as well as the LGBTQ community. Because um, when it comes to men, there is an ego about a male that just tells him that he's not a victim. He can handle this, whether it's he's being abused by a female or a male. And so getting men to even come to a session is hard so that they can understand that they can be um, victims or be preyed upon by abusers. Um, so just getting men to understand that that can happen to them and they can find themselves in that situation and that there is a way out um, is very difficult. But I believe that it starts from from very young, we have to start talking to our children at a younger age about behaviors that are appropriate and inappropriate. Um, and of course, at age appropriate ways along the way, not just a one time talk that's a consistent conversation over years. Um, and I can say that it worked with me. Like I said earlier, my grandmother was in an abusive situation and she talked to me. I can remember probably from early as age five and every now and then she would have these conversations with me and my sister about 
her relationship and what she wanted for us. And these are things that we can definitely instill in our sons as well. Um, and even our teens, our, our young adults, when you see them um, getting into relationships, you know, having those conversations about appropriate behaviors, like, you know, you're in a relationship and your partner is acting up, what do you need to do? Do you need to strike back? Do you need to start shouting? When you find yourself reacting in a, in a manner that's not who you are, then you need to leave. You need mm -hmm. to remove yourself from that situation. And it's really hard for a male to understand that um, he's in a bad situation. I know the first person that I assisted with a protection order that was a male and the protection order actually reads that you're fearful of this person. And then your guy, right? He was like, well, I don't need this because I'm not fearful of her. Mm -hmm. And so I had to explain to him, you actually are because you're fearful of what she will do next. That's going to provoke you to do something that's going to be extreme. Yeah. And so when he saw it in that context, he was like, yeah, because that's that's why I actually came to you, because I just need her to stop trying to provoke me, because that's where we are. And so um, I, I, I think I, I think I mean, and, and this must be said, I think the first form of uh, abuse I realized in Bermuda was when we were fighting to end conscription and the amount of young men. Um, that would come to Larry Marshall Sr. that had been abused. Um, certainly mm -hmm. some of those cases made it to the news um, through courts and so on. And what you're saying sums it up a lot. Um, many of them didn't want to come forward because the argument was they'd be called gay if pe they found out they were abused by men, other men yes. in the regiment. Yes. Um, there were things that um, the abuse, because it was an abusive structure, that, oh, they're just saying that because they don't want to be there. That was one of the most extreme situations that I don't think got enough attention, but it was the first time I had um, understood male abuse at that time. But Karen Simmons, we'll close it out. She has a question. Um, kind of on the back of that, are you seeing an increase with males? Because the world's evolving. It's changing, right? Um, are we seeing more men come to terms that they should report? Like, are we seeing an increase in people coming to you for this? That's, that's a quick answer. Yes, we are. Um, this year alone, we have seen five men already who've come in for our services. Now, sometimes that can be the number for the entire year. And so here we are in only our fourth month, at the beginning of our fourth month, and we've seen five men already come in for services. So, yeah, that is definitely something um, that we have seen an increase of. And I think the more we speak of it in um, forms such as the daily hour, um, we will be able to have more men come in because um, we have to understand that abuse is not just men on women. It's women on men as well, women on women, men on men. And so um, the Center Against Abuse provides services to adult victims of domestic abuse and sexual assault. And it's our role to assist those victims in any way that we can to maintain their safety as well as their physical safety and mental safety as well. All right. Can you just remind people how they can get in touch um, with your organization? Sure, you can give us a call on 292-4366. We also run a 24-hour hotline. That number is 297-8278. You can send us an email at info at Center Against Abuse. We also have a website, centeragainstabuse.bm, and we are on Instagram and Facebook. Laricia, right. thank you so much for the conversation and uh please don't be a stranger don't make it long we, we need to keep these conversations front and center definitely and and before i go i have a question to 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 the both of you as males oh. what would you do if you heard a situation or saw a situation going on where um someone was being set upon whether verbally or physically what would you do um yeah i get it um Depending on, it's, it's difficult because, you know, does the aggressive day come on me and I have to worry about my physical safety? That always comes into play. Yep. Um, yep. I'm much different now. I have a family and I always think family first. Yep. Um, but getting involved can be a quick shout, getting diverting, calling the police may be an option. Um, yes. So get involved doesn't necessarily have to be, hey, and, you know, be put yourself in physical harm. But I think 
you have to do your best to try and get involved. Yeah, we had a situation almost two years ago, a uh, neighbor wife running out at four o'clock in the morning. Um, and, you know, me, I was prepared to go out there, just share the one, I mean, white beat or whatnot. And no, you don't know if they have a gun. So it depends, I mean, it, where I'm at and then the, the, the situation. But I think uh, uh, getting in touch with professionals um, at the earliest is yeah. probably the best. Because one thing, you know, I was taught in St. John's Ambulance is heroes die first. Um, you don't want to go out trying to be a hero when there's other options to actually uh, mitigate the situation. So, yeah. And yeah. And so one of the things that we teach is definitely call the police, call the police immediately. That's their rules to maintain peace within the community. And so even if that means that you have to call that police a couple of times, look, I called 10 minutes ago, nobody's here. You keep calling back. If you have to call a couple of times a week, continue to make that call. If you know that children are involved, you know, Department of Child and Family Services, um, it's our role as adults to report when children are in abusive situations. And so even just contacting DCFS and saying, listen, I hear a lot of stuff going on. I know children are in that home. Somebody needs to um, actually have a conversation with their family doing an investigation. Mm -hmm. And those professionals will be able to assist um, the individuals in that house. You know, a lot of times people think, I don't want DCF involved because they're going to take my children. DCF does not want your children. They want to ensure that you are in a healthy space so that your children can grow up in a healthy space as well. Indeed. We've got to run. Thank you so much. And again, don't be a stranger. For sure. All right, Laricio, folks. Folks, if you appreciated that conversation, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like, and please share these conversations. You never know who you might be able to assist. Stick with us. Don't go anywhere. Ordering from ER Fisheries has just gotten simpler. With just a few clicks of a button, you can place an order for next day delivery or same day pickup. Our ever expanding list of offerings now include grocery pantry items, specialty meats, and bread and dairy items. We know things have been hard, and we're here to make planning for your next meal or party easy. Whether you're a vegetarian or a meat eater, we have what you're looking for. And best of all, it can be delivered to your door in 24 hours or less. Go to www.erfisheries.bm and check out our wide range of seafood, beef, lamb, pork, poultry, fruits, vegetables, and plant-based products, all available at reasonable prices. That's www.erfisheries.bm. All righty. Thanks again to Larry Shields Center Gangs Abuse, folks. If you appreciate it, the conversation, give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Thanks again to the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring we can have important community conversations like this. It's time for the Daily Play brought to you by Bermuda Trivia, now available at stores throughout Bermuda. Follow Bermuda Trivia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out why it's Bermuda's favorite trivia game. Larry, are you ready? I'm ready. It's a remember when, folks, you may need to help him out. We're testing his sports knowledge today. It was the Masters weekend. What year did Eldridge Tiger Woods win his first Masters tournament? 1997. My goodness. He didn't need your help, folks. He didn't need your help. I mean, I didn't even want the music, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His hands, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Anyway, on April 13th, 1997, 21-year-old Tiger Woods wins the prestigious Masters Tournament by a record 12 strokes in Augusta, Georgia. So, yes, he won his first Masters in 1997. Yeah. Yeah, we're well, going to skip his arrogance and getting that so fast. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, 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 yeah, you know, it, actually, we should disqualify him if he doesn't let my music play, right, Karen? Um, but somebody yeah. in the comments could have did it, and then you'd have said that I was um, copying from the comments. And, you know, I, I saw a certain someone trying to look into the side, and they was trying to answer one of our female co-hosts. Mm, yeah, cheaters. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, look, let's wrap it up. Sports, and then obviously the Laricia and the Central Gangs Abuse. Yeah, I think two very important conversations. Um, I think, as I said, everyone can make a case for the sport and what goes, but I think all sports need the resources and we, we just need to 
keep striving forward, put pressure on the right groups of individuals to get these things done. And as a result to, or as we go to the abuse, uh, she said a few things that really stuck out for me and um, part of the community and the continuing conversations. You know, I think sometimes we have these conversations and then we put it to the side, but, but she was right, you know, if a child, you know, you talk to them, but as they grow, you continue to have those things. And I think conversations like this need to happen. Uh, it's almost like school sometimes, though, I feel with this subject, the, the, the parents that show up at PTA are not the ones you need to see. Um, so the hard thing is, is that a lot of people that's hearing this message get it. Um, some that don't necessarily need, don't necessarily get it and need to hear it. So that's an issue that we want to kind of try to address. Yeah. As far as sports, um, I, I definitely believe that we need to do a better job of selling ourselves in our sports. And what that may require is um, groups um, treating their sports like businesses. Um, people want to do business with with other business with other businesses. So I think understanding business at a young age as an athlete, um, how to carry carry yourself, how to um, you know market yourself is probably going to be your best uh, plan going forward. Um, as far as abuse, I, I think one of the most interesting things, um, and I focused on financial abuse because we always think of abuse so many times in, as a physical thing or a verbal thing. But it's so much more than that. And it could be financial that leads to verbal or physical. I, I think there's so many different angles that we need to consider and that abuse doesn't always just have this one look or feel to it. So grateful to the work that Lori and the Center of Against, Against Abuse are doing. Um, Larry, you got any daily inspiration for us? I do. And today's daily inspiration is brought to us by E.R. Fisheries. And we're staying on the Parkinson's Day theme. Your Parkinson's does not define you. Your strength and courage does. And that's by Unknown Author. Appreciate that, folks. Don't forget to subscribe on our website. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we continue to do our part to improve the community one conversation at a time. Thanks again to our partners, the BAC Group of Companies, Medical Ops, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we're able to do this with you on a daily basis. If all goes well, we'll be back to do this again with you tomorrow. He's Larry Marshall Jr. I'm Jamal Hartman. My friends, please do make it a safe and a great day. We are out. Peace. <laughs>